What was, what was I gonna What was I gonna say? What was it? What was I gonna say? No, I don't know. I'm I'm you. I don't I don't know what you're doing. What was I gonna say? You're messing this up. No one's going to ever take you seriously as a music reviewer again. Hi everyone, single, single payer here, here, the internet's healthiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Elder album, Reflections of a Floating World. These guys are a Massachusetts band releasing their fourth full-length album here, and for over a decade now, the band has been building one monstrous album after another off of the sounds of stoner and psychedelic rock, of doom metal. Now, previously, I have not been that big into the band's music because I have felt that uh, some of their stuff has been like a slight exercise in nostalgia. You know, though I completely understand why albums such as Dead Roots Stirring would resonate so deeply uh, with metal fans who prefer maybe a more purist approach in their doom. The solid riffs, the trippy guitar leads and solos, uh, the very dense, thick, heavy mix, the headbanging grooves, what's not to like? But on the band's next album, Lore, uh, Elder started dabbling a little bit in more gloomy moods on their record, uh, more melody, more mid-paced riffs and passages were worked into tracks like Deadweight. So even though that LP did not wow me, uh, the band was certainly pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone a little bit. They continue to do so on this new LP over here with a sound that is more diverse, more mature, but not in such a way where the band loses their original appeal. Elder is still bringing the massive riffs and the dark, grim atmosphere they introduced on their last album, but everything this time around feels a little more intensified, a little more fine-tuned. The sound is a bit more dense, the performances are more visceral, the spacier, more subtle moments on the album feel just a bit more delicate. On the introductory track of the record, the band comes back at least a couple of times with these ribcage rattling riffs right after just a very very, very quiet, very, very small, and very tension-building uh, guitar passage. The band is really doing their best to make these songs sound and feel dynamic. I would even call some spots on this record, like, kind of catchy. A sanctuary! Which is actually a pretty sticky refrain on the record. Also, we have a very intricate and hard-hitting introduction on the next track, The Falling Veil, which features these busy, busy rhythms that syncopate very tightly with these harmonized guitar leads. Previously, I didn't even know Elder was capable of or really interested in writing metal music that is this lively. It's moments like this on the album where Elder is actually working in elements of progressive rock into their repertoire. And fusing doom metal with prog rock was a trick that I enjoyed a lot earlier this year on the new Paul Bearer album too. Though Elder's approach is noticeably different, while Paul Bearer's incorporation of progressive rock leads them to, uh, I guess, a more anthemic and a more melodic conclusion, uh, Elder's answer to that mix, that formula, is to play more flashy, play more aggressively. This is not one of those patience-testing stoner or doom albums that basically reduces redundantly lull you into a boredom-induced hypnosis with the same two or three riffs for like 12 minutes straight. Now don't get me wrong, the songs on this record are long, you know, most of them are above 10 minutes, but while they are long-winded, they're also electrifying and blood-pumping. They're ever-changing. They're versatile. There was even a moment toward the end of the second track on here where the soaring guitar leads in the mix uh, were kind of wailing away almost as if they had been lifted out of a post-rock song or something. And the keyboards that are suddenly incorporated into the song Blind uh, are surprisingly great considering that this is not usually an instrument that Elder has been known to make a focal point of in their music. The amount of structural detail that the band works into a 10 minute song, track after track after track, is incredible. It's like on each song here they're trying to embark on a massive but mini metal opus. That is until the song Sontag, which feels mostly kind of like a impromptu jam extension off of the previous track, which is not necessarily a bad idea at this point on the album, and certainly I don't think the results are horrible, but they're certainly more underwhelming than the previous four tracks. Not only that, but I think that <laughs> there could have been something in the way of like a, a strong ending on this cut. Still, at this point on the album, it is nice to hear the band performing in a much more fluid and loose setting, especially after the very dense four tracks that preceded this cut. Uh, it's kind of a very necessary breather before the band comes through with the 
finishing track, which I'm actually just slightly more disappointed with because considering everything that preceded this moment on the album and, you know, that Sontag interlude type track, uh, I'm hoping for and crossing my fingers for just like a huge finish, a big finish, something epic, something grand, something that's gonna melt my face off. Unfortunately, this is not really the pull out all the stops moment on the record that I was hoping for, though it does seem like the band does try to some degree. We get surprise touches of string sections during a few points on the track, uh, which are nice in theory, though I wonder whether or not they really elevate the sound of the song all that much considering just how saturated the mix is with guitars. Uh, it's like the strings barely carry any weight. Still though, this track does feature one of the stronger vocal performances on the entire record. Record. Uh, I guess while I'm picking apart the album, I will say that there were some tracks toward the beginning of the album that I wish had a stronger, larger, louder vocal presence. Uh, but the longer I listen to the record, the more I notice that, hey, it's, it's almost like the vocals are getting more aggressive and a little bit louder in the mix as the album goes along and they pretty much come out on top in the end. The very end of this song, though, is very solid. One of the more epic moments on the album. It definitely gives me a sense of closure for the record. And I don't know what else to say, man. This is just one of those records records that you listen to it and everything about it that is great is just so obvious from the get-go. You know, it, nothing about what makes this album a fantastic doom metal album, what makes this album just a great metal album, period, uh, is, is just right there. It's on the surface. It's plain as day. The band's just hitting you with BAM! This is what's so great about what we're doing. This is what's great about the record. And we're just going to wow you with it for almost an hour. Very great, adventurous doom metal record uh, with some strong notes and elements of progressive rock. Really impressed with the band's performance and writing and uh, the production on this thing. And it's pretty amazing Elder was able to reinvent themselves in the way that they did uh, for this new release over here. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe. And please don't uh, die or cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. Anthony Fantano Elder. Videos next to my head you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website too. Forever.